I've made a lot of videos on crawl spaces and, um, you know, crawl spaces could be built differently and depending on where you live. So when you live in Florida, that's considered a cooling climate zone. Okay. So, you know, every, there's a lot of different things happen here than they do in the mixed climate and heating climate. And so, you know, and then this map is a rough map. There's also a lot of different things that happen here. But when you do your crawl space, you really should, first of all, figure out where you're living and then how your house is designed and how you're going to properly condition your, or not condition your crawl space. So today we're just going to talk about um, the two types of crawl spaces. So, um, and I, I have a lot of videos on this so you can look them up for this act i'm in crawl spaces but the ba the bottom the bottom big difference here is that forget about what's going on up well in here the big difference is there's a vent here so air can go in and out of your crawl space that's called a vented crawl space now if air can go in and out so can moisture hot air cold air etc right so if cold air can go in or hot air go out, that's naturally you want to insulate your floor, okay? And you want to also install a vapor insulation type barrier, okay, uh, in this area. So you keep the moisture from going up into the house. So basically this whole space is cold and hot and humid, you know, and then it's vented, okay? And the other thing that's important on this one is the insulation is up here. Not here, but you still have a vapor barrier to keep from moisture from coming up. Now, each crawl space is different. So this is considered a vented crawl space. You know, the only problem with vented crawl spaces is people like them, they mix them up. So they have a vented crawl space. And then what do they do? So this is a non-conditioned space, right? So then what they do is they put ductwork in here. Okay. They put a furnace down in here. They put a, a water heater down in here. So you're putting an HVAC system into a non-conditioned space, which means that if you have ductwork in here, and let's say return, that's the part that sucks. The return has duct leakage. It's not sealed. It's going to suck non-conditioned air into here and blow it into here. So then this place here becomes pressurized. And we have a lot of videos on pressurized homes and issues with them like ice dams and I have a lot of videos on that but let's let's get just stick to the basics here so if we have a vented crawl space and we put a furnace in this vented this vented crawl space which is non-conditioned that's non-conditioned then the furnace is going to work much harder and if you've got supply duct leakage it's going to blow this air out that you're heating if you've got duct leakage on the return you're going to suck non-conditioned air and pressurize up here right and then we got a whole bunch of other problems going on plus you're sucking you could be sucking radon gas hopefully this vapor barrier is 100 percent sealed in both of these crawl spaces 100 percent sealed you know a lot of people in cleveland will take this vapor barrier all the way up to the wall up into here and they'll they'll tag it on top so it's like sealed and a really good vapor bearer to use could be just a radon blanket because the millage is thicker, okay? And then you want to seal the radon blanket in all the holes and penetrations. And you might even want to put a sub pump in here, especially if you have issues. But we have videos on that. Now, so this is a vented crawl space. So let's move over to this page here. And, okay, now this page here, we'll go to this one so I have to hold it down. This is, there's no vent here, right? So this is a conditioned crawl space, okay? So what we want in a conditioned crawl space is we probably want to heat it, cool it, dehumidify it. And yes, we could put in a furnace in this one because you see there's no insulation here. Remember we showed you the insulation is on the floor in a vented crawl space. We still have the vapor barrier. That's the state the same. The vent changes. So then we go over to here and we don't have a vent. So we have the insulation on the outside wall, okay? And then, of course, we could insulate that. And, you know, basically they call it insulation pillow, you know, placing a bag snugly between a joist. <laughs> the, you know, everything, by the way, everything looks great in these books. 
Does it happen like that in reality? No, I don't think so. But anyways, so what's important here is that we don't have a vent to the outside, but here's an issue. If moisture gets, if this isn't 100% sealed, the moisture will rise up into this space, cause condensation, you're going to have mold, etc. If this doesn't work, the drain tile doesn't work, or the grating is not poor water gets in here, it can't dry. So the, 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 with the other, with the vented one, at least if it was vented and water got in here, then yeah, it can dry. I'm not saying I like this one. I really don't. But if it, you know, it wouldn't, it could tolerate some moisture in here because you've got communication to the unconditioned exterior. However, this one, which is the right way to do it in Ohio, okay, because I live in Ohio. And I think the vet, all crawl spaces should be conditioned crawl spaces. Now, you got to remember a couple things. So we're going to insulate the wall. We're not going to insulate the ceiling. We're not going to have a vent in here. This is perimeter insulation. And this has to be sealed 100%. So you might want to run your vapor barrier up this wall and then put the insulation. And, you know, this foundation doesn't have to be concrete. It could be masonry, whatever. Okay, we're, we're not worried about th these details or these details. But we are worried about is if we do this design, we can't have moisture in here. So if we have a moisture problem, then we need either a sub pump on the inside or a dewatering well on the outside, or we got to fix the grating, we got to fix the gutter, we got to fix the drain tile, whatever we got to do. We don't want water in this crawl space because we're going to have a furnace in here. We're going to have ductwork in here. We're going to have, you know, we're going to have maybe a water heater in here. So now, what do we do? So here we can actually pressurize this a bit. So we open up a heat register with our HVAC unit in this. Now it's called condition crawl space because warmth and cold will go up and down, right? It's not sealed like the other one with the vapor barrier and it wasn't sealed with insulation because the insulation is on the outside wall. But we still don't want water and moisture and, and, and radon or whatever coming up from underground either, right? So we want to heat, cool, and condition. So yes, we can run a dehumidifier, down in here we could have a sub pump if we do put a sub pump in we got to have a hundred percent sealed lid okay make sure you got a battery backup make sure there's a light down there and then we could run a dehumidifier down here and we, we have to hook that dehumidifier somewhere we may have to take it out and dump it out maybe we'll hook it to the sub pump maybe we'll cheat and run it to the sanitary whatever i'm not going to tell you what to do but you want to dehumidify and then you want to heat cool and condition so in the winter time it's going to be a little bit drier because the furnace might be down here. And if you've got a heat vent, it'll dry. Now, when if it is wet and moist, then, you know, by drying, it will create high indoor humidity. So in that case, we want to run a dehumidifier. Um, you can maybe, sometimes you could just put the dehumidifier in the upper unit. And if you have a vent or some type of passive vent, that'll work. But it's better. They do sell dehumidifiers in crawl spaces. Crawl space dehumidifiers are rather expensive. Um, 800 bucks you could spend, six to a thousand, you know. Um, if it's a, a large enough space, you could put it, you know, just put it down in here and then somehow get, you got to worry about the discharge, right? Run a hose. You might have to run it to a sub pump or a little small miniature pump to pump it up to a higher elevation and pump it outside. But anyways, the vapor barrier has to be sealed. Also, I don't like dirt. And that's a whole nother issue. I would probably recommend concrete. If you don't have it, then at least have some kind of vapor barrier that's 100% sealed. You can't, it doesn't take a lot of moisture to come through a rip or crack or a tear. So you don't want to use cheap plastic. You want to seal around the columns. You want to use duct tape that's going to stick to the columns or piers. And back to condition, vented. So in the old days, we're, we'll just go to Ohio for now because we could spend eight hours on this topic. So in Ohio, in the old days, they were all vented. And they did do this, okay, um, right here. And, you know, it worked all right. But today, this, in, a, in the early, we didn't have air conditioning. Now, the minute it gets cool up here, and we have this design, and it's humid down here, you could cause dew point and condensation in mold and mildew during cooling climates. So that's something you got to deal with. Okay, that's one problem. That's why sometimes when you go in a house, you could smell a musty odor. Well, it's a musty crawl space. Now, it could be musty because that's leaking. It could be wet. It could be muddy. You know, you could have all these problems going on. But that is a problem today with air conditioning with this kind of design. So I would recommend if you're in Ohio, do all your research before you before you condition your crawl space. The key, the key issues are 100% seal vapor barrier. 
Perimeter insulation. Insulation in the band joist pockets. Sealed. No insulation between the floors. Condition heating, cooling, and dehumidifying, especially dehumidifying when necessary, in the crawl space. And then if you need to put a passive vent in or put a register in or do an HVAC balance, you could do all that as well. So this is Marco. Oh, by the way, I do have a service um, called, uh, if you just Google, call Marco with a question, M-E-R-K-O. Um, it'll prompt me to a PayPal site and for about 15 to 20 minutes, sometimes half an hour. I could try to solve your problem. Sometimes you'll send me some photos. It, you know, you could send me photos ahead of time or we could do a FaceTime. You can go in your basement. We could talk while we're going through it. And I'm pretty good at solving problems nobody else can or at least giving you a second opinion on something you already know about. Sometimes people just want to hear the same thing again from another source and I can and I know all these areas and designs and so I could talk I talk to people all over the country so Google call Marco with a question anyways uh, thanks for coming on please rate and subscribe I do have some products sometimes below I have an Amazon affiliate store so if you're going to buy anything um, get it here it's the same price on Amazon, on Amazon. Uh, I just get like I think point half a percent or probably less than that but anyway so thanks for coming on Rate, subscribe, like.